Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to The Kendo Show. Okay, we've got a brand new type of video for you today. It's the first time I've done anything like this. Um, hopefully we can do it again if it's something that you guys like. Uh, basically, I'll be doing a kind of vlog type uh, video uh, from a very, very special trip that I made, which I will go into the details of very, very shortly. But before I do, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know the important YouTube magic. And keep the channel going. Keep these videos coming, whether it's videos like this, whether it's videos like the instructional content that we put out, Kendo Rant, feedback videos, translation videos, all those sort of things that come to you free of charge. You need to keep them going by shopping at kendostar.com, the best Kendo equipment website in the history of mankind. Of course, I would say that because I own the place, but we all know it's true. You're going to come to us eventually. So skip the middleman, come straight to kendostar.com. So many moons ago, in what seems like a lifetime ago, <clears throat> June 2020, I got a fantastic question on Kendo Run, and the exchange went something like this. Uh, next one. Hi Andy, I live in the middle of nowhere, and a couple of friends and I have taken up Kendall. We've been practicing for the last four or so months using your Zero to Shodan series to do our very best to do everything properly. Our issue is that the closest Kendall club is two and a half hours away, when I talked to them about us trying to work out a way to do Kendall there, they said that they said they're not willing to teach any of us because of the drive and that they don't think we'll have the commitment to show up. While I understand their viewpoint and respect their choice, it leaves us kind of high and dry. My question was simply, how should we go about progressing? I recently purchased a bog set from you, which I love, uh, and we're currently practicing two to four days a week. But we're a little unsure of exactly what we should be working towards. Thanks, and I love the show. Brilliant. Here's where I'm going to go a little bit uh, kind of away from what people are probably expecting, I'll say. But here's what I want you to do, okay? One, watch the Zero to Shodan series and follow it exactly, okay? Do exactly what I say in the video. Don't do any other things. Don't mess it up. Don't change it, yeah? Do exactly what I'm doing in the video, all right? Don't add any other stuff. Don't worry about Jigeko, all right? Jigeko is when you're doing the free sparring. Don't worry about that right now, okay? Uh, next bit is um, don't hit each other too hard. <laughs> uh, concentrate on accuracy, not power. Keep your left foot straight, okay? Don't let your left foot turn out. Keep your left foot straight. The next part of Zero to Shodan will be about the exercise Kirikaishi, okay? Kirikaishi. I've already got a video about Kirikaishi, but the next one will be exactly about Kirikaishi from the beginning, like on the Zero to Shodan path, all right? Follow all of those steps, okay? And be committed to doing it, all right? You need your friends on board for this, all right? Because at least, you need at least another, another one person, preferably another two people. Don't skip the early parts of the videos, all right? Do that for a year, okay? For one year. If you can get to another dojo every so often just to get someone to check up on you, that's great. If not, don't worry about it, all right? If you do that for a year, 365 days, okay? 365 days from today, all right? From today, if you're still doing that, you're committed to it, you haven't quit, and you've been following it exactly as I've said, yeah? You hit me up in a year's time, right? And I will come and teach you personally, all right? I'm serious, I'll come and teach you personally. So obviously, 12 months passed from that question. However, it wasn't really the case that I could easily travel over uh, and uh, fulfill the promise. However, finally, the time came in June of 2023, a full three years after the original question was submitted, that I was able to travel over to the Rocky Mountain Kendo Club in Buena Vista, Colorado, and fulfill that promise. Now, yes, I did say it was the Rocky Mountain Kendo Club because 
things grew in those three years from just the couple of guys trying to train together following my videos to a fully fledged kendo club. Barry, who originally submitted the question, he went on to achieve fantastic, amazing things in kendo. He went on to um, place highly in one of the biggest US Q grade tournaments, and he achieved his Shodan, which was absolutely brilliant as it was the, vi the video series Zero to Shodan that I actually put him onto. So it really is a testament to how if somebody commits uh, to Kendall and really pursues themselves and really does um, commit to sticking on the, the, the correct path. And as I said to him, as I said to him in the, in the original video, follow exactly what was said, don't change any of it and make it up. Then going from zero to Shodan is certainly, certainly possible. And, and, and Barry was a fantastic example of that. So let's have a look at how the trip went. Okay, car's all packed. Ready to go. Tonight we drive to London, ready to fly from Heathrow tomorrow for our trip to Denver. The trip to Heathrow was pretty uneventful. We stayed over uh, in a hotel the night before and in the morning took the shuttle bus to Heathrow Airport. After the nice uneventful journey, we proceeded to uh, travel to Denver and after arrival, went through the usual process of uh, border control immigration, traveled on the shuttle bus to uh, pick up our rental car. After picking up the car, I enjoyed my first experience of driving in the USA in wonderful, wonderful weather that was there to greet us. Uh, and we checked into our massive hotel, which was uh, really, really nice. <clears throat> okay, so arrived in Denver. Arrived in Denver yesterday. Last night it was about, I think we landed about 7 p.m. Got back to the hotel about 9 p.m. Once I picked up the hire car, all that torrential downpour, thunderstorms, <clears throat> you name it, it was crazy. It was really, really interesting. Um, great fun to drive in uh, on the opposite side of the road. So yeah, uh, that was a fun experience. Uh, done all that. <laughs> Today is Thursday. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll check out of this hotel and we'll head to um, Buena Vista, Rocky Mountains, which is our ultimate destination. That's where we're going to be teaching Kendall at the Rocky Mountain Kendall Club. That's the whole point of this trip. Really super excited about this. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Really, really awesome. Um, yeah, bit of a road trip tomorrow. Try and get some footage of that for you today. It's a bit of a rest day. Trying to acclimatize a little bit to the, the altitude. We're going even higher tomorrow, so that's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> uh, just going to go and get some shopping and stuff soon at the supermarket or Walmart, whatever it's been. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I might grab some footage of that as well. This is finally doing this sort of vlog thing, and it's not all Kendall related, but um, you know, that's the whole sort of point of this is, is to kind of log the trip uh, as a whole. Um, Kendall Live will be teaching five sessions. Uh, we're doing Friday night, we've got three hours, we've got two two-hour sessions on Saturday and two two-hour sessions on Sunday. Um, and essentially, obviously, as we all know, this, this the whole point of this trip is that we're dealing with a kendo club that's, that's come up from nothing. Really, really amazing what they've done. Absolutely outstanding. Um, and I'm super, super excited to be part of it. Um, I've got no idea um, what it, the overall sort of... Uh, Know, level is uh, <laughs> always going to be like, but the, the, the plan basically is um, to stick as close as I possibly can, or make sure that everyone's sticking as close as they possibly can to the 
uh, the guide for kendo instruction uh, from the ZNKR, from the Old Japan Kendo Federation, so that we know that everybody's sort of doing the right thing. Hopefully. So we'll go have a look, see how that goes. Um, I've got the book with me that we can follow along with, starting from the very beginning, both from Tsuburi, through Kirikaishi, some Michikomi, some Kihon, all that sort of stuff. We'll probably do some kata as well in there somewhere. Um, we'll log it all on video as we go along. Uh, but for now, it's, uh, as I say, it's, a, it's a, bit of a, a bit of an off day. We'll go and uh, I'll go and get some footage of what it's like in the supermarkets and stuff. Um, and I'll get some video of my dinner. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting the door door. Really looking forward to it. So yeah. Oh good, look at that view as well. Look at that. That's so cool. Okay, cool. See you soon. So we headed out uh, to Walmart uh, to get some supplies and uh, generally marvelled at the size of uh, many of the items on sale. Had a bit of fun uh, going around the place uh, trying to find uh, the, the biggest uh, packages of, uh, of daily groceries. Then for lunch we went to a uh, what appears to be a chain restaurant called Red Lobster. Um, <laughs> uh, it was really nice and it was uh, surprisingly cheap from the point of view of a British person. What's the name? We enjoyed that very, very much. And uh, for the evening, uh, Miyuki and I went to have a barbecue. On the next day, we hit the road and head out to Buena Vista. But first, we took a little stop at a place that our kids had been pestering us to go to and send photos of, uh, which was some kind of ice cream place called Dairy Queen. The drive itself to Buena Vista was absolutely beautiful. Really, really lovely scenic drive uh, sort of through the, the mountains and valleys. Um, absolutely fantastic, really, really enjoyable. Um, I was starting to get a, a lot more used to driving on the opposite side of the road as well. Um, the weather was nice, didn't have those thunderstorms that we'd had previously. Um, but I was already uh, starting to feel the effects of the altitude, so that was a really interesting um, experience. Uh, as well the drive itself it sort of took um i think it was about two and a half hours or so um maybe a little bit more um and it was um but, but a nice leisurely um comfortable drive it wasn't um it wasn't stressful so uh, very very enjoyable okay so arrived at Buena vista was maybe what well, like a two and a half hour drive from uh, from denver it was fun, absolutely beautiful, really scenic drive um, through the like uh, over the through the mountains, the Rocky Mountain uh, uh, mountain range, through the valley sort of thing. It was really really cool, really beautiful drive. Uh, still kind of getting used to driving on the opposite side of the road. Um, <clears throat> the hotel I'm staying at, the Best Western Vista Inn, uh, really nice hotel actually. Um, to be fair. Look at this, check out this beautiful scenery around me. Look at this, look at this. What an absolutely gorgeous part of the earth this is. Absolutely blessed to be here, absolutely wonderful. Um, it's now what, uh, four to four um, in the afternoon. Weather is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna burn though uh, if, I, <laughs> if I keep, I went in too much like this with the complexion like mine, but 
I just wanted to show you how absolutely gorgeous this place is. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the first kendall session we have um, at the Rocky Mountain Kendall Club starts at uh, 6 p.m. Three hours till 9 p.m. <clears throat> As I said already, um, focus of course is going to be a lot about making sure that we're working on the basics. Of course, you know this this club has come a long, long way um, from from nothing and um, from starting essentially from from videos that I put out there on uh, on YouTube from the Zero to Showdown series um, and uh, sit on this boulder here. Um, and you know they've now sort of become this fantastic little club um, with great results as well um, but you know having come from that sort of uh, you know right from the, from the ground up um, I, I feel like my responsibility here is to really make sure that to leave them with something that they can keep um, and, and keep them on the right right path with uh, so we're going to really be focusing on Kihon, starting right at the beginning uh, with obviously Deho, uh, Suburi, checking all that forms right, right there, uh, Ashtabaki footwork, um, all that sort of thing. Um, before we move into sort of Kihon, Kibikaishi, which Uh I'm not sure what kind of practice they're doing on the regular, um, so obviously I'll be asking them a lot about that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really, really great. I'm really, really excited for it i really am i'm having such a wonderful time here i'm not touched by shina yet um, <laughs> uh, so i can't wait to get some kendall done it's been um it's been some days since i last touched the shina what day are we on now friday wow wow i didn't touch shina since monday uh, which is an awful lot for me uh, <laughs> an awful long time and um, it's been windy by the way so apologies for that it's uh it's an awful long time for me to get to see it's really windy, um, so I'm see if I can go somewhere. It's not as not as bad, uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to to getting my hands on my shinai again, um, and and doing some paper. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that. I'm having an awesome time. What an awesome trip! Beautiful weather. Now, obviously, as I said when we first got here, the weather was a little bit stormy. Um, I don't think we've seen the last of that either. Um, I think there's more of that to come. Um, but for now, it seems to be doing okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Beautiful food. That's really amazing. Really windy. Sorry. Sorry about that. It is, we are up in like the mountains. But like... Uh, We're like 8,000 feet above sea level. So yeah, there's a bit of wind. So, so there we go. So the next time you'll see me, I guess, will be in the dodo. So yeah, great, here we go. So finally, Miyuki and I ar arrived at the uh, venue of the seminar, which was absolutely beautiful, historic museum um, that we were able to use the second floor. It was an absolutely picturesque building um, and it was a really, really lovely venue. Uh, we began the seminar, um, as you might expect, uh, with very, very basic things. We started right at the very, very beginning with uh, introduction to Deho, correct? Deho, um, <clears throat> Ashisabaki, Kamae, uh, and I gave um, some teaching points on Suburi, uh, including, um, you know, demonstrations as well as um, some short lectures and it all seemed to um, be taken very, very well by the attendees. Now, as you can see, obviously, this is a very, very small event that we're hosting. Buena Vista is really in the middle of nowhere, as the original question said when Barry sent it in. Uh, but it's still, we were very, very happy uh, to have visitors that had come, come from uh, Denver City as well. And um, it's important to note as well that um, the group, uh, since asking the question uh, to us, had um, been getting uh, regular guidance from um, a another sensei, uh, Robert Bowman sensei, who, who, who was present at the seminar as well. Um, and I was very, very grateful uh, to, to the assistance he gave during the seminar and how he's been looking after uh, this group of very, very dedicated uh, kendoka. 
For the Suburi practice, we of course practice the main types of Suburi, Joge, Suburi, Naname, Suburi, Shomen, Suburi, Zenshin, Kotai, Shomen, Suburi, uh, Sayumen, Suburi, uh, and of course, Haya Suburi. After Suburi, we worked on some Ash Sabaki drills and some more Suburi type practice, um, but this time using the length of the dojo. Then we worked in pairs and um, practiced some distance training um, and striking practice without bulgur. Obviously, given the nature of the seminar, uh, we focused very much on doing things uh, in a basic but very, very correct way, uh, sticking to Kihon. Uh, I've placed a lot of emphasis on making sure that the, uh, the, the Kamaya was proper uh, and that the left foot was always placed in a position to strike. Um, as I mentioned in the original answer to the question about keeping the left foot straight, uh, I really wanted to emphasize the importance of, of using the left foot properly um, when we're doing Ash Sabaki and making the correct, correct kamae. Next we moved on to uh, Kirikaishi after everyone had put on the men and uh, we started with just basic uh, slow correct Kirikaishi um, and I gave a small talk about how it's really important for um, the Sayu men strikes during Kirikaishi to as much as possible to be made um, at an equal angle. It's very easy to do one side correctly but the other side at too much of a shallow or too, um, <clears throat> too wide an angle. Uh, so to concentrate on that, especially whilst we're doing Kirikaishi nice and slowly, again we're really focusing on making sure that we're doing the basics of Kendall uh, Kihon correctly. Next, I really wanted to uh, hammer home the idea of being able to strike immediately uh, without moving the left foot from the kamae position. So in other words, having the kamae being an actual ready position so that they can make strikes without having to prepare first. This is a, this is a, a habit that beginners uh, develop very, very early and it sticks with them throughout their kendo career over many, many years. And it can be very, 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 very difficult to overcome so um, I wanted to you know with the with the idea of this seminar being um, being sort of helping uh, or leaving uh, this group with people uh, with uh, with advice that they can keep and hopefully help them develop going forward I really really wanted to concentrate on that so the exercise uh, that we did was I had them um, move to their isoku ito no mai their cutting distance and then they had to wait for my whistle they had to be in the kamai and then as soon as the whistle went that's when they had to hit without moving their left foot so they have to they have to be able to strike from their kamai position without making making any preparatory movements So then we took this concept a step further and we integrated it into our Kirikaishi. So now we're practicing Kirikaishi with Humikomi, uh, receiving with the Shinai. Um, but again, I really wanted to hammer home trying to avoid uh, moving the left foot before striking. Okay, so getting to the cutting distance and from the Kamai position, I'm um, doing, doing the men strikes. Um, so before each shoumen strike in the Kirikaishi, we would have to go on the whistle. Then once we once we practice that, we would uh, practice Kirikaishi again, this time without the whistle, but try to keep 
the same thing in mind. So the whole purpose, of course, is developing an effective, uh, strong kamae that's able to uh, make strikes from any moment at all. So that brought us to the end of the first session of our seminar. It was an absolutely resounding success. I think it was um, a really, really beneficial uh, exercise for the members of uh, Rocky Mountain Kendo Club. They seemed to really, really respond well to it. And I saw them starting to prove to improve even throughout that first session. Um, it was difficult, it was uh, tough, it was hard work, um, especially at that altitude, uh, but really, really, really felt like it was a, a successful and beneficial trip already and was already starting to look forward to the next day. Okay, so day one was uh, complete yesterday. Here we are, ready to go, set off from the hotel for day two uh, of our <coughs> Sort of mini seminar with uh, Rocky Mountain Kendo Club. I can't get over this scenery though. I'm just basically doing this just to show you all again. <laughs> great, uh, great first session yesterday. Uh, three hours we did um, focusing on on basics. As I said, the the, the key here is is making sure we're kind of um, sort of sticking with the the Zenken Nen uh, pattern for the book. The syllabus, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, warm up, subiri, good stuff. Uh, Ashtabaki, um, did some good practice without Bulgur. I think we're going to continue that theme today. We've got two sessions today, two three, uh, two two hour sessions. So, we're going to spend a lot of time um, working on the basic stuff. See if we can nail down um, some of the finer points of Kirikaishi, uh, the swing mechanism for Meiji, and uh, you know getting down the solid foundations of a good kamae uh, and movements after hitting as well. Uh, sort of things that I identified from yesterday uh, that we're going to bring into today. So really looking forward to it. It's going to be good. <clears throat> See you in the dojo. So we began the second day uh, recapping a lot of what we'd done on the first day. So we started obviously warming up a and what have you, and then we went straight to some Ashtabaki practice. Uh, I added a few new patterns for them. Again, the whole emphasis was all about having a left foot that can do um, strikes without preparing itself from the Kamai posture. Um, so always being able to use your left foot properly. And when we're doing the Ashtabaki practice, that means that when they even when they move it quickly, when they turn around that it's carrying their body weight forward and doesn't let their body weight fall backwards. Again, these are these are these are very difficult uh, things to fix later down the line. So it's a good thing to practice right in the beginning. We also talked about how the danger is if you let your weight fall backwards after you turn around after making a strike or or, or, or whatever situation that there is a there is a chance of being struck and, and we almost have seen that where somebody's made a strike run past turn around and and not being ready uh, for a for a follow-up strike from the opponent who is inevitably chasing on after them Aiki practice and distant practice followed, so both parties moving together, uh, and then we moved on to doing Kirikaishi. After we'd done Kirikaishi for a little bit, um, we then moved on to doing some very, very basic and short Uchikomi. Now, it was very, very clear that the, the altitude was playing a, uh, a big role in the fatigue uh, everyone was experiencing, uh, including myself. It was very, very, very um, difficult to uh, to breathe uh, as normal uh, at that altitude. So what we did is we practiced Uchikomi, but in just um, short sets, bursts of three large men strikes continuously. Um, so we did that. Um, it was it was excellent. Everybody did super, super well with it. Um, the, the emphasis, um, was made again about how to make sure that you keep your left foot working for you properly, hit speed up, um, and um, most importantly, when you turn around, don't let your weight, your body weight, sort of fall backwards, but push yourself 
forward. So I made a bit of an explanation point of that. And also once we get into Ichikomi, especially if you start to get tired, it's very easy to start to swing the shinai in very small movements when we really want to keep nice big movements uh, for this exercise. So that's something else that I picked up on uh, as well. Then after some uh, short Ichikomi, uh, we did uh, with uh, three times men, we did uh, three times Kote men strikes as well. And then we moved on to doing some just basic Kihon practice. So uh, we looked at men strikes, Kote strikes, uh, Kote kara men and uh, Do. Uh, I say Kote kara men because I wanted to sep not separate, but I wanted to, do, to wanted it to be a distinct Nidan waza, Kote and men rather than just Tan Tan, Kote men sort of thing. Um, and uh, we, we, we had a go at that and we also um, did a little section where I, I put on my borg myself uh, and gave a little, little demonstration, <laughs> not the best demonstration in the world, but uh, a little demonstration uh, for the attendees of what it was that we wanted them to aim for. After that, we did a very, very short jigeko. Uh, jigeko was not something that I planned to spend a lot of time on during the seminar. <clears throat> the seminar itself, the purpose was to leave uh, leave Rocky Mountain Handle Club with uh, some sort of uh, practice methods and ideas that they could keep uh, with them in order to help their study group improve. And I didn't think that uh, Jigeko was the, the sort of main thing for them to improve from doing that. So we just did a little bit and um, just just so they, you know, they could have a chance to do uh, Keiko with each other and, and with myself and with Miyuki as well. <clears throat> Finish with the final Kirikaishi and that was the end of the second day. On the final day of the seminar, um, everybody was uh, quite tired. So we ran <coughs> through the Bokuto Niyoru Kihon Waza Keikoho. Uh, we spent most of the morning looking at that. Um, and then we also looked at the Nihon Kendo Kata uh, in the afternoon as well. Um, I didn't get a massive amount of footage of this part of the seminar. Uh, Miyuki needed to help me uh, demonstrate a lot of it, but um, it's also, it doesn't make for the best viewing either. Uh, but we spent most of the <clears throat> the final day running through the, the box door related uh, aspects of Kendo. We then put the Borgo back on and um, did a, a short run through again a sort of recap of uh, everything we've done in the seminar and uh, finished uh, with a final little jigeko um, before uh, finishing the seminar uh, in its entirety. During the midday break of the third day of the seminar, uh, Miyuki and I uh, jumped in the car and took a drive up into the mountains uh, where it was absolutely beautiful viewing um, and of course uh, it was snowing up there uh, and then we returned back uh, to Buena Vista uh, and had our dinner which was a, this lovely burrito. Okay so we've come to the end of our <coughs> fantastic trip to Colorado. 
uh, spending some wonderful time with uh, the members of the Rocky Mountain Kendall Club. Uh, it was a fantastic few days of Kendall. Uh, we covered uh, lots of things. I'd have liked to have covered more, but as as is always the case, you know, there's never enough time. We had a great um, few days, sort of a mini seminar style type thing, um, covering sort of all aspects really of the initial stages of Kendall, uh, obviously given where this uh, Kendall Club has sort of come from. Um, I think that was definitely for the best, covering everything from initial Leho, uh, Suburi, Asabaki, Kamae, striking, basic striking, Kirikaishi, uh, some Uchikomi, uh, basic Kihon as well. Um, and uh, we had time as well to go over some Kata, and Bokuto, Niori, Kihon, Wazakeiko as well. Um, and it seemed like a really, really successful event. Um, the, the members of the club definitely, definitely seemed to have enjoyed themselves and, and benefited a lot from it. So um, as long as that's the case, that, that means that the trip has been, um, you know, I couldn't, couldn't ask for more than that. It's been an absolute success. So um, yeah, uh, this is probably the last sort of vlog video I'll make on that. We're about to check out of our hotel, head to the, head out for probably a, a couple of hours of sort of relaxed time before we head to the airport and fly back to England. I'm gonna miss this weather. I hear it's quite sunny back in the UK, but I don't think it's quite what it is here. It's a little bit dry. You can see I've probably already, I've caught the sun quite a lot with my complexion. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been fantastic and I'm looking forward to coming back. So finally, I'd like to close the video just by, first of all, extending a huge, huge heartfelt thanks to um, all of the members of Rocky Mountain Kendo Club. Um, without you reaching out in the first place, asking the question on Kendall Run, um, this experience would never have happened. Uh, it was an absolute um, pleasure for me to come over um, to Buena Vista and enjoy Kendall with you all. Um, it was it was really, really fantastic. And it was fantastic to see the hard work and determination that you have all put into Kendall and, and making Kendall happen in a place that it never existed before. Uh, I really appreciate you doing that. And I really, really do thank you for it. Um, thank you everyone as well for uh, joining uh, me on this trip uh, through this uh, vlog video. I do hope it's been uh, enjoyable and um, interesting video it's a bit different to what i normally make i know um but it has been made possible uh, through the support um that all of you have given uh, to the channel uh by shopping at kendostar.com that's the way to continue supporting us uh, and maybe perhaps we can make another video like this again uh, in the future uh, once again thank you for joining me and uh, see you in the next video